Hi guys, what these videos are going to do is to show you how to prove each theorem. Some of these theorems in geometry are examinable and they can ask you to prove them in exams. I will be telling you which ones that you will have to know. You should have in front of you the notes with these pictures on them so that you can prove them as I do. You'll have to play around with what works for you, but it might be best to watch the theorem being proved once, and because I talk really fast, it might be helpful then to start again and pause as you need to write stuff down. So let's start. Theorem 1. Theorem 1 says, a line drawn from a center of a circle perpendicular to a chord. Now what does that mean? Well that means if you have a circle and you have a line drawn that is from the center of the circle, then if it happens to hit a chord, now what is a chord? A chord is a line drawn from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle. And in this case, I've highlighted the chord, which is AB. So we have this line from the center, and it hits this chord, and most importantly, it hits this chord at 90 degrees, or perpendicularly. Now, if you have this situation, theorem 1 says that then you can assume that this chord is bisected. So what that means is that AM is equal to MB. So now we have to prove that in every situation where you have a line from the center that's perpendicular to the chord, it must be broken in half. Now when you're proving theorems, you always have four headings. You have given, required to prove, construction, and then you actually prove it. So let's start with given. In this case, you are given a circle with center O, and you're given that OM is perpendicular to AB. What are you required to prove? You are required to prove that AB is bisected, which means specifically that AM equals MB. Now the construction that you need to do is that you need to draw in what is OA and OB, and they're both radii. So you draw them in and you write this under construction. Now we're ready to prove this. Now, as soon as we draw this construction, hopefully it jogs your memory of something we did in grade 10 and grade 9, and that is congruency of triangles, because as soon as we draw in these radii, we have formed two triangles. And if we're ever trying to prove that one part of a triangle is equal to its partner, congruency is the way to do it. So we have to start with in triangle OAM and triangle OBM. Then we have to come up with three things that are equal in these triangles. Now, personally, I prefer to do what is given to me first. So number one, it was given to me that angle M1 and angle M2 is equal to 90 degrees. Then I like to move on to anything that could possibly be common. In this case, OM is common. And lastly, your construction of OA and OB are equal because they are both radii of the circle. Now what this means is we have a right angle we have OA and OB, which are the hypotenuses of their two triangles, and they're equal. And then we have a side that is equal. So we can conclude that OAM is congruent to OBM. And our reason is right angle hypotenuse side. Now be careful when you label these triangles. They must be in the right order. So A is in the same position as B, and therefore those letters are in the same position in the names of the triangles. And similarly with the O and the M. Now this means that if our triangles are congruent, we've done our theorem. That means that AM must be equal to MB, and our reason is using that congruency. Now, whenever we use this theorem in, a, in an example or something we call a rider in geometry, if you see a line drawn from the center of a circle, and it's perpendicular to a chord, you may assume the chord is bisected. And the reason is perpendicular line from center to chord. Now we simplify that to perp from center to chord. Now let's proceed to an example. So if I look at this example, it says O is the center of the circle. Now as soon as I read the word center, two things pop into my head. The first thing is theorem one. Theorem one is always about centers of circles. And secondly, as soon as I hear the word center, I think radii. So if I look at my picture, I can immediately label that SO and OP are equal. Then I carry on reading. SP is equal to 100. So I'm going to label that into my picture. And as soon as I do that, I can label my 50 and my 50. They then tell me that OT and QP are perpendicular, which immediately makes me think of theorem 1. And they tell me that OT is 40. And the question is, find the length of OP. 
So it often helps to draw in exactly what the question is asking you on the picture. Now as soon as I've done this, I see a right angle triangle. And so immediately my mind thinks of Pythagoras. So I like to come up with a plan before I even start answering a question. So in this case, I can immediately see that I can find TP using Pythagoras. But how does that help me to find QP? Well, we just learned a theorem that says if you have a line from the center and it's perpendicular to the chord, it cuts the chord in half, which means I think I have a plan for my question. So let's start. First thing I write down is SP is equal to 100 millimeters because it was given. Now it seems a bit silly to write down things that are given, but geometry is like a story. So it helps your examiner if you tell them the full story as opposed to leaving stuff out. Now I know that OP is therefore equal to 50 millimeters because it's the radius of a circle. And I know that OT is 40, again, because that was given. And therefore, I can work out TP to be 30 millimeters using Pythagoras. Now, in this particular example, I didn't show you my working out for Pythagoras. And you don't have to if you know the answer immediately. Now, I know the Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5. So 30, 40, 50 is a Pythagorean triple. Obviously, if it was more difficult, I would show all my working out. But now, this means that QT is also 30, and this is where our theorem comes in. I know it's 30 because I have a perp from center to chord. So in my head, I know that this means my chord is bisected. So QT is also 30, which means I can finish and I can say QP is 60 millimeters, and I'm done. Right, we're going to go on to theorem 1B. Now, theorem 1b is the, almost the exact opposite of theorem 1a, so we call it the converse. It literally means the opposite. Now, not all converses are true. So, for example, all squares are rectangles. That is true. But all rectangles are not squares. So, it's not always true that the converse of a theorem is true. Now, in this case, it is. And the converse says this. A line segment joining the center of a circle, and in this case, they've told you it's a midpoint. So they haven't told you it's perpendicular, they've told you it's a midpoint. So there we go, we have my single of my circle, and we have a line segment from the center, and it's joined to the midpoint of the chord. Now what this theorem says is that you can then assume that this line is perpendicular to the chord. So you may then assume that this chord hits the line at 90 degrees. Now you don't have to learn this theorem off by heart in terms of its proof because it is not examinable as a proof. So all you need to know is the reason and what the theorem says. The reason is line from center to midpoint of chord. Now sometimes it gets confusing as what's A and what's 1B, what's 1A and what's 1B, so you just have to practice all these things. So let's practice an example of theorem 1B. So if you're given a circle with center O, now again, as soon as I see the word center, I start thinking of my geometry theorems one. I also start thinking about radii. Now it also tells me that AB is 16 centimeters in length, and clearly labeled in the picture is that my two halves are equal because they told me it's a midpoint. They've then told me that OA is 10, and they've asked for the length of OD. Now again, as soon as I see this, I see a triangle, and my first thought is Pythagoras. However, Pythagoras only works in a right-angle triangle. Now, this doesn't look like it's a right-angle triangle because it has not been labeled. But can I prove that it's a right-angle triangle? Well, what have I been given? I've been given a center of a circle and a line to the midpoint of a chord. Now, theorem 1b tells me that, therefore, this line will be perpendicular to the chord. So I can start. AD equals DB equals 8. We knew that because we were given that it's a midpoint, so there's no reasoning there. Now here's the important part. I've just said that angle D1 must be 90 because there's a line from the center to the midpoint of a chord. And theorem 1b says that if there's a line from the center to the midpoint, it must be perpendicular. Now as soon as I've got my perpendicular line, I've got my right angle triangle. So I can therefore build Pythagoras' equation. So 10 squared would be 8 squared plus OD squared. I can continue solving by squaring my, my numbers. And finally, it's very obvious to me that OD is 6 
centimeters. Oh, I said millimeters. I'm sorry, I meant centimeters. So I hope you see the difference between 1a and 1b. 1a is if you're given the center and you're given its perpendicular, you can assume it's a midpoint. Whereas 1b is the opposite. If you're given a center and you're told it's a midpoint, you can assume it's perpendicular. So now we can go on to theorem 1c. Theorem 1c has a star next to it, which means it's examinable. Well, its proof is examinable. And it's a bit of a strange proof. What it says is if you have a perpendicular bisector, so in this case they're telling you it's perpendicular, and they're telling you that it cuts it in half. So there's my perpendicular line, and it cuts it in half. Then it's saying that this line must pass through the center of the circle. So, what are we given? We're given circle with center O. Now we're told O is the center. We're given chord AB, and we are told that TM is perpendicular to AB, and AM is equal to MB. So basically we're told we have a perpendicular bisector of a chord. Now what are we trying to prove? Now I just see there that I've been writing IPT as opposed to R, sorry, RPT as opposed to RTP, required to prove. What are we trying to prove? We know O is the center. We're trying to prove that O lies on TM because TM is the perpendicular bisector. Now as I've said before, this is a bit of a strange proof. It's called a proof by contradiction. What this means is that we're going to assume something and then we're going to prove that that assumption leads to an impossible situation, which means our assumption must have been wrong. So it's a bit confusing, but let's start. So let's suppose, let's assume that O doesn't lie on TM. So O is the center, but it does not lie on TM. Now, if it doesn't lie on TM, it means that it must be off at some angle, but it is the center of the circle. Now, this means that angle M3 is 90 degrees. Now, why would angle M3 be 90? Because O is the center, and you have a line from O to the midpoint of a chord, which was theorem 1b. The line from a center to a midpoint of chord has to be perpendicular, which means they're telling us that angle M3 is 90 degrees. But that's not possible. Because in this question, we are given that angle M1 is 90, which means that angle M2 and angle M3 are 90. This line TM was perpendicular to AB. So we were given that. So this is completely impossible. You can't have angle M3 being 90 and M2 and M3 together being 90. So this is only possible if angle M2 is 0 degrees. So this means that O has to lie on TM because that angle M2 cannot possibly exist. Now it is a very strange theorem. It doesn't come up very much, so I wouldn't focus on it, focus on it too much. But it is a proof that is examinable. Now the reason we use when we use this theorem is that we have a perpendicular bisector of a chord. Right, now we've done theorem 1. Theorem 1a. 1b and 1c.